tonight we will be having a water baptismal service. I know there's one that uh, desires to be baptized. If there's others, uh, feel free to participate. We just want you to follow in the footsteps of the Lord Jesus Christ. Brother Simmons, will you lead us in prayer tonight? Father God, we thank you for another day that you've given us. Thank you, God, that we're able to be here tonight, God. God, I ask your blessings upon this congregation. I ask your blessings upon the evangelist who brings the word of God. But God, whatever is done tonight, we give you glory, honor, and praise, Lord. God, we love you. We appreciate you. And Lord, we ask you now, God, just for this service, Lord, let the Holy Ghost touch each and every heart, I pray. In Jesus' name. Start with page 24 in the yellow book. Pray for my voice. It's been wanting to go out on me lately. I sincerely and humbly ask your prayers.
get ready. This is a good place to get yes, ready. Yes, yes, yes. Hallelujah. Sure. You may be seated. Thank you, Jesus. Thank God for his presence tonight. Hallelujah. 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 God has been so good to us. Every yes, service of this meeting that we've had, Amen. this revival, God has been so good to us. Oh, thank you, I know that the uh, our young people got to singing Sunday night. I believe the Lord just got to singing through them. Yeah. And uh, many hearts and lives were touched and blessed. And yeah. Brother Driston has been just uh, preaching his heart out. Yeah. I appreciate that so much. Amen. It's time for us to receive our evening offering. This is our last opportunity to give <laughs> to Brother Driston. And uh, he's got a, a busy schedule ahead of him getting prepared for a wedding. He's excited about yeah, getting married. I'm glad he's excited about getting married. If he wasn't excited about getting married, he does not need to get married. <laughs> amen. Come on, some of you, some of you that's married, say amen. 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 And uh, we just need to pray that 20 years from now, he's still excited about getting married. Praise God. Hallelujah. Will you let the Lord speak to you tonight? Anything that comes into this offering, whatever you give, I, I don't care what. You if you're going to give it toward Brother Tristan's ministry, I promise you, it goes to him. Okay, we're not a church that keeps back part of it for expenses or, or whatever. Whatever comes in for the evangelist is what the evangelist gets. And uh, so I just want you to let the Lord speak to you. Will you do that? And let God just bless Brother Tristan through you tonight. Through you. And many times we come and say, Preacher, touch me, bless me. But sometimes God wants us to bless the preacher. And so this is a great opportunity to do that. Father, you know the need. Every need you said that you will supply. God, I know that in the days ahead, Lord, that there will be extra that's going to be needed. Father, tonight I not only pray blessings upon this offer, but God, I pray blessings upon Brother Tristan's sister Hannah's life. God, upon the marriage to God that they're about to partake in. God, that, that union of life forever. God, I'm just asking you, Lord, that your blessings will be upon their home. The blessings and anointing of God that will be upon their life and their life will be fruitful for you. But help us tonight, Lord, to be a blessing to them. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen and amen. I am how blessed I really am. But I am a blessed individual. I thank God for all of his blessings. I want us to go to the Lord together in prayer one more time. We have several of our people that are in the hospital. And uh, I told some of them today that we would be having prayer for them tonight at church. Sister Marlene Lay needs God to really touch her body. Uh, she really needs a touch from God. Uh, Charlene is another one. Uh, really doctors have done about all that they can do and she needs the Lord to reach down and touch her Barbara is doing better but uh, she is still in a lot of discomfort and she just needs God to, to give the doctors wisdom and knowledge on how to treat the infection and uh, Sister Mary Horton uh, some people do not know Sister Mary Horton she comes on Sunday morning she sits back toward the back uh, a very precious little lady but uh, she's gone through some real serious surgery. And she needs God to really reach down and touch her. 
And so will you just help us pray? And you know, Sister Charlene, whenever that we went to pray for her, a lot of times she starts calling off all of her children's names. And she's laying there sick. And I hear her praying, calling out their names and saying, God save them. God save them. God save them. That's the heart of the mother. And she says, I know that God's going to bring them in. What faith, what confidence. I know sometimes you feel like a yo-yo at church. You're up and you're down. But I want to ask you to stand up one more time. I want us to go to the Lord together in prayer. Let's ask God tonight to move upon these needs. Sister Juanita, she needs God to also reach down and touch her. You see, we have several people that's not in the hospital. But they're really needing God to bring healing to their body. Sister Norma Hawkins is another one that really needs God to touch her. It's so good to have Abby with us tonight, but Abby needs God to give her a complete healing in her body. And uh, Sister Caldwell, and, you know, just go on. Gloria's been sick, Sister Joan, and uh, we have a lot of folks, a lot of folks. I know I'm leaving some out. I don't mean to, but I want us to pray for these that God would just reach down and touch them. Father, in the name of Jesus. I don't know how you do it. But I know you do it. Lord, you give strength to those that are weak and weary and worn. You give help. Even to those that sometimes, Lord, they feel helpless. And they feel hopeless. But God, you're there. I'm asking you tonight, Lord, that you would reach down and touch every one of these that have been named. For God, you know the needs of their body. God, for those, Lord, that are fighting infections, battling cancer, heart problems, God, whatever the issues may be in their lives, God, I'm asking you, Lord, to put your hand upon them to God to heal, God to make whole. God, I'm asking you, Lord, to give strength tonight and to the families that are facing very critical times because, God, some of them are having to make decisions and answer questions, God, they're not comfortable with. I just ask you tonight, Lord, that you would move upon the needs of these people. God, that you would heal these. Lord, that they would be a witness and a testimony of the healing power of God in 2018. And Father, we shall not give you the praise. In Jesus' holy, righteous name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You may be seated. Sister Charlene, she keeps talking about a song that says that I can't even walk without him holding my hand. And I really like that song. This song does not say that one, but this song says I won't walk without Jesus.
this song and I practiced it in two different keys so y'all just pray for me that the Lord will help me. Amen. I don't know why my voice was going to give out on me. You know I've only screamed all week. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord.
sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. The Lamb is overcome. And we sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. And we sing hallelujah. Thank you, Pastor, for having me to come. 
I've enjoyed myself as well as I did uh, two years ago. Uh, I'm not so uh, happy about the circumstance in which I had to come to two years ago. Brother Elijah was in revival. Some of you may remember he got sick and couldn't preach, but I'm thankful that the Lord gave me an opportunity to be come back, you know, and, and to minister to each and every one of you. I believe... How many would say that the Lord has spoke to your heart this week? I know He spoke to mine. I asked Him to show me the hearts of you. That way I could effectively minister to you. And I believe the Lord has done that. And if He hasn't, well, He sure dealt with my heart. He's sure blessed me. It's going to be the book of Zephaniah, chapter number 3 and verse number 8. If you have it, would you say amen? amen? Thank you for standing for the reading of God's Word. It reads like this. Therefore wait ye upon me, saith the Lord, until the day that I rise up to the prey. For my determination is to gather the nations that I may assemble the kingdoms to pour upon them my indignation, even all my fierce anger. For all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. You skip down to verse number 13. I want to pick up there and, and read on down through verse number 20. He says, The remnant of Israel shall not do iniquity nor speak lies, neither shall a deceitful tongue be found in their mouth, for they shall feed and lie down, and none shall make them afraid. Sing, O daughter of Zion, shout, O Israel, be glad and rejoice with all the heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. The Lord hath taken away thy judgments. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. He hath cast out thine enemy, the king of Israel, even the Lord, is in the midst of thee. Thou shalt not see evil anymore. In that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear thou not, and to Zion let not thy hands be slack. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty and he will save. He will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with singing. I will gather them that are sorrowful for the solemn assembly who are of thee to whom the reproach of it was a burden. Now verse number 19. Behold, at that time I will undo all that afflict thee, and I will save her that halteth and gathereth her that driveth, uh, that was driven out, and I will get them praise and fame in every land where they have been put to shame. At that time will I bring you again, even in the time that I gather you, for I will make you a name and a praise among all people of the earth when I turn back your captivity before your eyes, saith the Lord. I didn't really have a title for this, but I just want to preach on heaven. I want to preach on a time that God's about to turn this thing all the way around and we're going to see His face. Amen. If you pray and ask God to help me, I specifically need you to pray very hard for my voice. I was reading and I can just feel it getting weaker and weaker, but I know that God's able. He said, my grace is sufficient. I'll supply all of your needs according to my riches and glory. So I'm believing that He's going to help me tonight to preach under the authority and power of the Holy Ghost. That's what I want is the anointing. Let's pray and ask God to help us in this place. Lord, again, we're so thankful for the opportunity to be in your house and to worship you, to exalt you and magnify your name, to lift up holy hands and to glorify you. Lord, I come before you as a humble servant, Lord. God, one that's empty and needing to be filled. God, one that's empty. God, I pray that you would speak your words though through these lips of clay. I pray, God, that you would anoint me with the anointing to preach effectively. I pray that you'd anoint this congregation, their ears that they might hear, their minds to understand and hearts to receive your word. God, I pray that you would deal with us. God, I pray right now that if there be any under the sound of my voice that are lost and undone and on their way to a devil's hell, that you would reach down your hand in this place and you would draw them unto you. Lord God, for I know the word of God said, no man come unto the 
the Lord uh, except the Spirit of the Lord draw him. But God, I believe in this hour, in this day, as you'll tell somebody about glory, God, that you would choose them uh, and call them to approach unto the throne tonight. Uh, God, I pray, bless us and help us and keep us uh, in the mighty name of Jesus and all of God's people. Said amen. amen. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. Uh, uh, I want you to look at your neighbor and say, I'm going to help the preacher tonight. Now, don't lie to him. I really need you to help me. Amen. I'll just tell you like this. I used to say this when I first started preaching. I used to say, the more you amen me, the more you come on, brother me, the more you hallelujah me, the better it's going to get. And if you don't say nothing, it's going to be dead dry and plucked up by the root. I'm telling you, I need your help. I need your help. But most of all, I need the anointing. I'm ready to see God move. What about you? Amen. You go back and you look through the book of Zephaniah, only three chapters, I believe, there uh, and you'll find that in the first and the second chapter and even the beginning of the third chapter all the way up uh, through verse number eight uh, that it's all doom and gloom. Uh, you'll read about how Israel's turned their backs on God yet again. Uh, you'll read about how God has got a belly full and you'll read about how God uh, has gotten sick and tired of being sick and tired uh, and God says I'm just going to pour out my judgment and that'll be that. Uh, I don't mean to take away from any of that not to put anything off on that but I've heard about judgment and I've heard about that but not many times do I hear people preaching on heaven anymore but I'm here to tell you yes the judgment of God and the wrath of God is a reality but if you and I have been born again then there's a place that we're going after this life is over and it's a place called heaven it's a place where we're going to go and we're going to be seen or we're going to be standing before the throne while Christ is seated at the right hand of the Father. We're going to make praise unto Him. We're going to worship Him. And I'm thankful that one day you and I get to be a part of that. Can I tell you tonight that if it were not for Christ, His resurrection, His death, burial, and resurrection, His sacrifice on the cross, that it would not be a possibility for you and I. But I'm here to tell you tonight that because he died, uh, he has opened up an avenue by which we can go uh, into that holy of holies and we can make our petition known boldly before the throne of grace. Uh, and I'm here to tell you uh, that if you go to the throne of grace as a sinner broken for your sin, if you'll go uh, as somebody of a broken spirit and a contrite heart, uh, the Bible said that person he will not refuse. Uh, but I'm here to tell you tonight uh, that if you're lost and you're undone uh, then what we read about to begin with uh, is sadly your reality at the end of this life uh, can I tell you I've heard people in this world say uh, that I want to go to hell because all my friends will be there uh, I want to go to hell because uh, there's going to be a party there uh, I'm telling you right now there will be no party in hell your friends may be there but you're not going to be worried about who they are or even where they are because all I read about hell is that there's darkness and fervent heat and gnashing of teeth and screams that come from hell. I'm here to tell you tonight that hell is a real place and hell is a place for the sinner and for the backslider that don't make it right with God. But if you'll make it right with him tonight, if you're lost and undone, you don't have to leave this place the very same way you came in. But I'm telling you there's an old time. Oh God of heaven. He was there in the beginning and he's still here tonight. The very same God that formed this earth and separated the land and the sea and separated the light and the dark and separated and called it day and night, land and sea. I'm telling you, he showed up here tonight. Somebody say amen. I said he showed up here tonight to pull you from the grips of hell. He showed up here tonight Night, to pull you from the grips of Satan and to let you know that there's a better place that this doesn't have to be the end of the rope this doesn't have to be the end of your hope but there is a hope be 
beyond the grave because of the sacrifice of a man 2,000 years ago that bled and died and gave himself as the sinless, spotless Lamb of God that you could be saved out of the darkness, that you could be brought out. And I'm telling you tonight, hell does not have to be your final destination. But tonight, you can make that place which we intend to preach about. Call heaven your home. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, there was too much too high a price paid for you to die and go to that place called hell. There was much too high a price paid for you to have the wrath of God poured out on you. But that man named Jesus gave his own life's blood for even you that you can make heaven your home. I've heard about the judgment, but I've also heard about and read about the great day of deliverance. Amen. I'm telling you, there's coming a day if you're one of God's people, you're not going to have to face that enemy anymore. Some of you miss that. You've been fighting the devil all your life. It seems like every time you turn around, the devil's got you bound. But I'm telling you, there's coming a day. That great and terrible day of the Lord. You're not going to have to fight the devil anymore. Matter of fact, I believe you can read it over in Revelation chapter number 12. If I'm not mistaken, 9 or 12, one of the two. And he says, the accuser of the brethren, that old dragon, he was cast down. Hallelujah. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. Listen, if you've got the the blood of Jesus applied to your life friend you can make that place called heaven your home and I don't know about you but I intend to go there because in hell there's suffering in hell there's pain in hell there's torment there's a lake which burneth with fire and every liar shall have their part in it but if you can get under the blood flow and let God change that lion tongue if you can get under the blood flow and let God Turn your life around. You can make that place called heaven your home. I intend to go there. What about you? I believe the Lord would set up a U turn sign right here and say, Don't continue in the way there in which you are going, but turn around and make your life worth living. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, therefore, wait ye upon me, saith the Lord, until the day that I shall rise up to the prey. For my determination is to gather the nations, that I may assemble the kingdoms to pour upon them my indignation, even all my fierce anger. For all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. Listen, we ought not to get comfortable here. <laughs> Amen. This is not my home. But I do know there's going to be a millennial reign here. God's going to come down. Listen, this is Bible doctrine. God's going to come down. He's going to set up his kingdom on earth for a thousand years. There's going to be a millennial reign. But I'm telling you, I don't want to stay here. I'm ready to go to the new Jerusalem. Can I tell you that it's being prepared as we speak? I'm telling you that place is being prepared. And I believe the final preparations are being put on those. Amen. Gates of pearl, walls of jasper, streets of gold, and pearls that we've never even seen. Jewels that we can't even comprehend. I just believe that when John saw it, he wrote it down to the best of his ability as a comparison to what we could imagine. But I'm telling you, I know what Paul said. He said it's not worthy to be compared. The time that we're in right now, the trouble that we're in right now, it's not 
not worthy to be complacent. Don't you make this world your home, but you decide I'm just a stranger passing through. Listen to me. Forever he is glorified and forever he will be glorified. When we get to heaven, there's going to be that 30 minutes of silence and then all of it's going to break loose. Listen, honey, if you ain't Pentecostal, you will be in heaven. Hallelujah. If you ain't Pentecostal, you don't believe in an outward form of worship, you better get off that bandwagon and hop on with us because there's going to be that worship of the King of Glory. There's going to be that laying of your crown down. Listen, I'm telling you, heaven, friend, it's going to be just the whole Holy Ghost Pentecostal fit the whole time, eternally, ages through. Amen. Oh, I'm telling you one day, I'm longing to be there. I'm longing to see my master's face and I don't know if I'll run I don't know if I'll shout I don't know if I'll cry tears of joy but I do know there will never be another broken heart there will never be other hurt feelings I'm telling you brother there will never be any more church problems well glory there will never be any more people problems amen There'll never be another regret. Amen. There'll never be another I wish I would have. Come on. Amen. That's good preaching. Amen. There'll never be a I wasted my life. Yeah. Meant to say this the other night. Thank the Lord for bringing it back to my mind. Maybe tonight was the night he intended to say it. Amen. I would rather, as I have heard people talk with atheists, they say, what if you get to the end of your life and you're wrong? They look at them and they say, I would rather live my life believing that there is a God and at the end of my road find out that there's not than for me to believe that there is not a God and at the end of my life realize that there was a God. Listen, if I have wasted my whole life preaching this gospel when I die, so be it. But if I have wasted my life on drugs and alcohol and, and trying to disprove a God, amen, if I've wasted my life on riotous living as that uh, prodigal son did and I come to find that there's a God at the end of this life, there's no hope of heaven for me. There's only a hope of hell. But I'm telling you, it don't have to be that way. Listen to me. There's weeping and gnashing of teeth, but in heaven, oh, hallelujah, there's the marriage supper of the Lamb. You ought to knew the fat preacher was going to jump on that one. Amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb. I'm going to the marriage supper. I'm going to eat heavenly food that I've never tasted here. That fried chicken was good yesterday, but I just believe God's fried chicken's going to be better. Well, amen. I figured I'd get something out of it there. Praise God. He said, for all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. I don't want to be here. Amen. What about you? Amen. Take me home. The whole book of Zephaniah before this point and even after up until about verse number 12 is where they're talking about all of these things that God's going to pour out His wrath. But then in verse number, I'm sorry, 13, He begins to turn around and His words, they take a different turn. They take a different meaning. He looks and He says, The remnant of Israel shall not do iniquity nor speak lies, neither shall a deceitful tongue be found in their mouth for they shall feed and lie down and none shall make them afraid. Can I tell you here in the book of Zephaniah that prophet was telling us that holiness is still right. Yeah. Amen. 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 Shout now somebody. Come on. I know that ain't popular. I said holiness is still right. Uh, inner holiness, outward holiness. Listen, I read something today. It said a standard will not produce Jesus, but Jesus will always produce a standard. Amen. 
Hallelujah. I mean to tell you uh, that uh, if we're going to go there, uh, there's going to have to be no iniquity. Amen. Amen. Amen right there. Uh, there's going to have to be no speaking of lies. There's neither going to have to be a deceitful tongue. Oh, my. He just got us right there. Well, I didn't lie. No, but you were deceptive. Neither shall a deceitful tongue be found in their mouth in the remnant of Israel. For they shall feed and lie down. Listen, if we live a holy life, we're singing that song around the house. If I'll live a holy life, shun the wrong and do roots right, I know the Lord will make a way for me. And none shall make them afraid. None shall make them afraid. I don't care how hard the devil comes after you. If you'll live right, heaven's going to be your home. I'm telling you, I like what Paul said. He said, I'm persuaded that nothing, That are, he said, I reckon that none of these present sufferings are worthy to be compared to that which is to be revealed in us. Amen. I don't know if he was talking about here or if he was talking about there. But in my mind, I can't help but think that this present suffering here is not worthy to be compared to what's there. Can I tell you that if we'll fix our eyes on heaven, if we'll fix our eyes on glory, then nothing will make us afraid if we make up in our mind that that's going to be our home. Somebody say amen right there. Then he said in verse 14, sing, O daughter of Zion. You know that's us. That's us. We're referred to as Zion. Israel's Israel, but we're Zion. Amen. He said, sing, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O Israel. Be glad and rejoice with all the heart. O daughter of Jerusalem, the Lord hath taken away thy judgments. Somebody ought to shout right there. He hath cast out thine enemy. I'm telling you, there's coming a day when we get to glory, when the trump of God shall sound and the dead in Christ rise first and all of the saints which are alive and remain shall be called up together with them in the air. There's coming a day. Uh, the judgment's not going to be there. Uh, he's going to cast out the enemy and we won't have to fight the devil anymore. Amen. I thought about that. The Lord has taken away thy judgments. I preached the message not too very long ago about how the devil would like to come and stand next to you on the day of judgment. And Brother Gavin, he'll bring up your past. He'll bring up my past. He'll bring up your past before the blood. He'll say, oh, that one was a cusser. We still believe in that? Still believe in holiness? Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth? But that which is edifying, amen, that's it right there. That's Bible for it. That one was a cusser. He's crying. Guilty. Guilty. That one was an adulterer. Guilty. Guilty. Listen, I don't want you to raise your hand. But I can just imagine you don't think anybody else feels forgiveness the way you feel forgiveness if you were an adulterer. But God washed you clean. I don't think that you feel forgiveness the way the one feels forgiveness when the devil had them bound in things that just made them feel disgusting that they could not even seem to get over themselves. You don't know forgiveness until you know you've been forgiven and delivered out of something you can't get yourself out of. Amen. 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 Guilty. They're guilty. They were an adulterer. They were a cusser. They were a liar. They belong with me in the lake of fire. But Jesus tells him, hush, step aside. There is no judgment. 
Because there is no, therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Amen. All I see is the blood. Step aside. They're not guilty. The Lord hath taken away my judgments. He hath cast out my enemy. The king of Israel. Who'd we, who'd we hear that the king of Israel was just last night? He's got to be your king. His name is Jesus. Even the Lord. He's in my midst. Hallelujah. And thou shalt not see evil anymore. I'm telling you that's something to shout about. There is no evil in heaven. Oh, hallelujah. There is no temptation in heaven. There is no darkness in heaven. For Jesus is the light. And he's always shining. Oh, hallelujah. We go on and we find in the next verse, he says, in that day it shall be said to Jerusalem fear thou not and to Zion let not thy hands be slack listen to me if we've worked for him he's going to reward us if we pray to him in secret he'll reward us openly did you know that the criteria to go to heaven is that you must be born again I'm talking about a place that I has not seen nor ear heard. Listen to me. I'm telling you, Jesus said I must go away to prepare a place. And when I come back, I'll receive you unto myself. If it were not true, I would have told you so. For in my Father's house are many mansions. Hallelujah. I'm telling you one day, friend, I've got my name inscribed on a mansion door and I'm going to go live there in my father's house oh hallelujah I'm going to heaven one day but it's because I made it right with him long ago that old account was settled long ago my debt was great but his love was greater if you've never had a reason to shout you can shout that your debt was great, but his love was greater. I like that old song. He paid a debt he did not owe. And I owed a debt I could not pay. I needed someone to wash my sins away. But now I sing a brand new song. Amazing grace all day long. Christ Jesus paid a debt that I could never pay. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, because he paid that debt, I can go to heaven. Amen. Listen, he didn't just pay that debt for me. And I got any blood bought redeemed people in the house of God tonight. Amen. Jesus has washed you and cleansed you and made you whole. He didn't just do it for me. Let me see your hands once again. Give the Lord a wave offering because you're redeemed. Look around. If God did it for them, he can do it for you. Amen. If God did it for me, yeah, he, can do it. he had to reach way down for me. Amen. But he did it for me. Listen, he wants you to live with him. I believe last night I quoted, it's not his will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. The next verse says, the Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. And I tell you, when we get to glory, it's going to be a mighty thing Amen. to see the hand of God, how he moved and brought us to that place. Amen. He will save. He will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love. He will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with singing. Can I ask you, when is the last time that we made him happy? When's the last time he could be joyful over us? When's the last time, you know, you always want to go and make your parents proud, or you should. When's the last time we made him proud? I know I told you I was going to preach on heaven. I'm getting there, isn't it? I ain't got quite where I want to get yet. 
I'm telling you, whenever he takes his bride away and we dwell there in heaven with him, hallelujah to the Lamb, he's going to have joy over us. He's going to say, this is my remnant who's held on. This is my remnant that loved me enough that though the devil, my adversary, came against them, they said, we will stand firm. We will keep the faith and we will make heaven our home. We will withstand because Christ paid that debt for you and I. I will gather them that are sorrowful for the solemn assembly who are of thee to whom the reproach of it was a burden. Behold that uh, oh, behold at that time I will undo all. Yeah. Amen. Boy, you better get happy. I said, Behold, at that time I will undo all that afflict thee, and I will save her that halteth, uh, and gather her that was driven out, uh, and I will get them praise and fame in every land uh, where they have been put uh, to shame. Oh, hallelujah. Can I tell you uh, that on the day, listen, the devil's tried to put us to shame. Somebody say amen. Uh, the devil's tried to make a mockery out of us the way we walk, the way we talk, the way we dress the way we act, the way that we live our lives. And I tell you that even though this world's tried to put us to shame, that there's coming a day whenever you are going to be translated out of here, whether by the grave or whether you're standing upright, driving in your car or laying in your bed, whenever the trump of God shall sound, it don't matter. They tried to put us to shame, but I'm telling you, there's going to be a day that we're going to receive that prayer. What do you mean? We're going to get glory from God. Well, basically, yeah. It's not going to be that he's praising us, but it's going to be that he translates us out of this body of flesh and he takes this spirit and he translates it to glory. I'm telling you, if I can get there and I can partake of that glory, if I can get there and I can share in his presence, that'll be enough for me. That'll be enough for me. Oh, to be in his presence forever is what I am longing for. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. I begin to think about that verse 17. I'm sorry, I've gone too far. If you'll go back for me. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. He will save. He will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with singing. Can I tell you, whenever I read that, I know y'all are going to laugh at me, but it's all right. I thought about me in just a week and a half from now. I'm going to take that girl home with me and I'm going to be happy. I'm telling, I'm not saying that I'm saving her from her family because she's got a good one. But I'll rejoice over her with joy and I'll be so glad. I will rest in our love together. Oh, hallelujah. And I'll joy over her. Listen to me. She's already he told me Brother Driston she didn't call me Brother Driston she called me Driston she said we gotta get a piano in the house she said because I want you to sit down and sing hallelujah and play and make me listen to me I thought about that wedding how joyous and how happy I'm gonna be when she walks down that aisle and those doors open and close behind her and daddy stands right there that preacher's gonna look and he's gonna say who give it this woman to be married to this man and her daddy's going to say her mother and I that's going to be the happiest day of my life but you understand that there's coming a day that we're going to be married to the Lord and there's coming a day he's going to split those eastern skies I'm telling you we can't get to him on our own but he bought us with a price I'm telling you those doors are going to swing open and he's going to have joy He's going to rejoice and he's going to have love. And I don't know, but he might just sing to us. Maybe. I don't believe I've ever read in there, but I, he might. I know he loves us. I know he loves us more than we love ourselves. He longs for us to take care, better care of ourselves than we do. Amen. I know that wasn't, that wasn't easy for all of us not health fanatics. Amen. 
Brother Spratlin done got on me. Sister Spratlin really did. I told her I was going to go, or somebody was going to bring me some donuts. She stood right there and hollered at me from that kitchen. She said, you don't need any donuts. I said, all right, praise God. No, I'm just picking with her. I love her. I appreciate her. She said, the brother Spratlin looked at me and he said, the sooner you start taking care of yourself, the easier it'll be when you get home. Amen. Hallelujah, Sister Leah too. I know, I see you looking at me back there. I've been over in that office. She's been a good mama this week. Amen. Hallelujah. But I'm telling you, he's going to rejoice over us that we've made it unto him. Oh, hallelujah. You'll never know love. I said, you'll never know love. Listen, I think I love that girl. And I'm trying my best to love that girl. And the Bible teaches me that I'm supposed to love her. I Christ loved the church. I Christ loves me. And I'm going to do my very best. But I know when I get to glory, I'm going to think probably within myself, there's no way that I could ever love any human being the way that Christ really, truly loves me. Within undoubt, listen, I may take a bullet for her. But there's no way that I could ever take her sin for her. I'm thankful that she's blood bought. I'm thankful that she's redeemed. And I believe that God has a ministry for us to partake in. But I'll never be able to love her the exact same way as Christ has loved the church. Oh, that he gave himself for it. That he took my sin. And he took my shame. And he bled and died to reconcile man to the living God. Amen. Hallelujah. Said at that time, I will bring you verse number 20. I'm sorry. At that time, will I bring you again, even in the time that I gather you, for I will make you a name and praise among all people of the earth when I turn back your captivity before your eyes. Y'all didn't get that. When I turn back your captivity before your eyes. Come on, somebody. Even Vestal Goodman sung this prison of flesh. These bars of clay are going to burst wide open. Our spirit may be liberated, but we're still living here. But the Lord said, when I turn back your captivity, when I open up the blinds, come on somebody, when I take you out of this fleshly prison, and I'll translate you to that glorified body. There won't ever be another pain. Listen to me. I do physical labor. I won't have to sweat anymore. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God, Brother Gavin. I said I won't have to sweat anymore. Listen, down here, the Bible says that if a man don't work, he don't eat. But I'm telling you, when we get there, it's going to be prepared. It's going to be laid out. There's going to be walls of jasper, gates of pearl, mansions upon mansions, streets of gold. But most importantly, the Father and the Son, all seated there together for me to worship them with these eyes that's never seen them my spiritual body hallelujah I'm going to get there I'm going to fall on my knees I'm going to lay my crown at his feet Amen. because he turned back my captivity before my eyes sister Tina you better come help me I'm going to quit right here can I tell you that heaven will surely be worth it all. Heaven will surely be worth it all. Hallelujah. He's going to turn us from this body of flesh, this vessel of clay. He's going to turn us into a 
heavenly body. He's going to turn the page one day. Listen, we've heard about the judgment. We've heard about the wrath of God, and I do know that it's coming if we're not saved. But Jesus, the Lord, the God, the prophet here, the prophet turned the page when God turned the page. He said, yeah, it's going to be judgment. Yeah, it's going to be wrath. But the remnant of Israel shall not do iniquity. Can I tell you that if you'll live right, I believe Titus said, but what does the Lord require of thee but to do justly, love mercy, walk humbly with thy God. I know the Bible says it rains on the just and on the unjust, but I do believe that there's coming a day it's going to rain on the just and it's not going to be some hazardous rain. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be some downpour of darkness, sure. but it's going to be the reigning of the king. Mm -hmm. It's going to be the reigning of the king, not the R-A-I-N, but the R-E-I-G-H, or G-N, I'm sorry. <laughs> Amen. It's going to be the reign of the king. He's going to come. The Bible says he's going to split those eastern skies in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. He's coming back. Hallelujah. If I'm not mistaken, this church, the way I'm facing is east. Amen. I'm looking for his coming. Amen. I see some of you thinking about it right now. Don't think too hard. Just let me preach to you. Amen. Let me tell you this. I want to see his coming. I want to know he's coming. I want to feel his coming. Coming. Hallelujah. Can I tell you, I believe uh, that whenever he begins uh, to make his return, uh, whenever he begins, listen, uh, nobody in heaven knows except the Father when he'll send the Son. Uh, I believe uh, that Christ may be standing at the door uh, with his hand uh, on the knob saying, is it time? Is it time? Oh, I'm telling you, Jesus is coming back uh, and time is running short, uh, but I believe uh, that just the moment the father gives the signal and says go son it's time I don't know I've never felt it before but I just believe there will be this feeling of glory in my soul as that trump of God sounds and begins to shake my soul awake if it's been a sleeping for a little while or if heaven forbid or, or uh, heaven come and I'm alive and I'm alive and remain I believe something will begin to quicken my heart. Listen, there have been times in this life because I work in construction that you hear a loud noise and it gradually gets louder and I can't tell you how many times in this life I've stopped and looked towards heaven and I said, God, is it the time? Listen, I've only been in this thing for about seven to eight years. I've only been preaching the gospel for six, but I know without a shadow of a doubt there's going to be a sound of a trumpet and we're going home one day. It won't be long and we'll be getting out of here. There have been times I said, Lord, is today the day? Is this the hour? There have been times I looked up at the sky and it was an off color and I said, Lord, I know the devil knows that he has but a short time. Is today the day? Is this moment the moment. Amen. Regardless, obviously we know now that it was not. We're still here. But regardless, we should understand and know the devil does have a short time. And Christ is coming back. Amen. As I'm getting ready to make this altar call, I just want to ask you, if Jesus comes back right now, there's only two options. Are you ready to make heaven your home? Say, Brother Driscoll, how do I make sure that I'm ready? You've got to ask Jesus to come into your heart and to cleanse you of your sin, to wash you and make you whole and give you that glorious rebirth that you'll not serve yourself, but you'll serve Him. Say, Brother Driston, I'm ready. 
I've been ready for a long time. Let me encourage you. He's still on his way. I told you about Mary and Martha. They called for Jesus. He didn't come. He did start on his way eventually. He's still coming. He's still coming. He's still coming. He's still coming. He's still, oh, listen, we've heard it for years. Your daddy preached it at Westlake Church of God uh, almost 20 years ago when I was just a baby. I can remember. Uh, I'd get up there on Sunday afternoon uh, and I'd try to mimic him preaching. He preached it then. And 20 years later, that little boy that grew up in his church right there in Jennings, Florida, is down here in Samoset telling you the same thing. He's still coming. He's still coming. He's not delayed. He's coming in the time, in an hour that you think not. I'm reminded of the story of those ten virgins, five wise and five foolish. Five made themselves ready. Five had all prepared. They were ready when the bridegroom came. But those five foolish looked at the wise after their lamps had gone out and they told them, give us some of your oil. Listen, I can't give this to you. I can't give you fire. I can't give you oil. And I sure can't give you salvation. But Jesus can. Amen. And I believe he showed up in this house right here tonight. As I said, I'm preaching to you the same message they've been preaching for 20 years. Jesus is coming. I'm preaching to you the same message they've been preaching for 60 and 70 and 80 and 90 years that Jesus is coming. Listen to me. This could be the hour. If I could encourage you of anything, 90 years ago, they did not know that we would be here in 2018. But I can tell you this. We're closer to the coming of the Lord now than they were then. And if they preached it then and they believed in then how much closer 90 years worth to the closer to the coming of the Lord I'm telling you tonight that Jesus is coming and heaven and hell is the choice tonight but I, I don't want to make hell my home I want to make heaven my home would you stand with me all across this place all of the saints praying lifting up your hands unto heaven asking God to convict and grip the sinner's heart oh if there be any in here in this place right now under the sound of my voice by the authority of the word of God I'm asking you I'm pleading with you this night to step forward and give your life over to a God that will love you beyond measure and beyond compare I'm asking you tonight if the Lord be dealing with your heart that you don't push it off and wait till tomorrow listen they've been preaching it for 90 years Jesus is coming and we're so much closer tonight to his coming than we've ever been before. Listen, don't push it off. Don't lay it aside. He's coming in an hour that you think not. I'm going to pray and I'm going to ask anybody that will to come and gather around this altar, Lord. In the name of Jesus, I preached my heart. God, I've given everything that I had into this message, Lord. God, I pray as we come before you, Lord God, that you would let us know with assurance, without a shadow of a doubt, God, that we've been made whole, that we've been made clean, and God, that the blood of Jesus has been applied to our life. Lord, I ask you right now to come down in a mighty way and touch the hearts of these people. Lord, I'm asking you come for a moving of your spirit. I'm asking you for salvation, old time conviction, to be in the house of God. I'm asking you, Lord, don't let us be shy, but Lord, let us step out from where we are and come running unto an altar of repentance. Lord, I pray that you would help us, strengthen us, touch us, Lord. God, I pray in the name of Jesus, save some soul tonight. God, let it be worth it. God, we'll love you and thank you. In Jesus' precious holy name, I want to go to that place of no oppression, no depression. I want to go to heaven. Amen. Come on, saints, let's gather around and pray for these. That's here.
sing this song at least one more time. As she sings it, those of you that would like to be baptized tonight, if you would go to the appropriate places. Once again, the ladies to my left, the gentlemen to the right, and the pair will, will uh, baptize you tonight. I want to say, and I appreciate Brother Driston preaching the Word of God to us. I appreciate the Word of God. Amen. Um, please remember him in prayer. And he said there are several people here that is asked to uh, request to be friends with him on Facebook. Keep a check on him. Keep him straight. Amen. Remind the people at Samus said are, are looking at him. They're watching him. And I pray for him and Hannah that God will just bless their home and bless their ministry, bless their marriage. Yes, Hallelujah. Sister Spallin, sing it one more time as we get prepared. Gentlemen, if I can get you to raise the screen and turn on the lights for me, I appreciate it. And when I see the face of Jesus. encourage any of you that anytime you feel like that uh, the Lord is leading you to be baptized or to be rebaptized, all you have to do is get with me. Uh, you know, you can't come to me Sunday morning and say right after the service I want to be baptized because it takes a little bit of time to fill up the pool. But uh, let me know at least a, a day or two in advance and uh, you sure wouldn't want to get in the pool right before we fill it up anyhow. Uh, it feels like somebody dropped ice cubes in it. So, uh, but it I want you to get closer to God. I really do. Anthony, come on. How many of you ever feel like that you're a work in progress? I think about the works of, words of those songs that says he's still working on me. And I'm finding in my life, the older I get, it seems like the more God's having to work on me. It seems like by now, well, that God's still working on me. And I am so glad he is. Anthony, would you like to testify? God's still working on him. <laughs> Amen. That's the testimony, isn't it? Father, I thank you. I love you and I praise you. 
God, for all of our young people. And God, for Anthony, Lord, that is determined. Lord, though we may falter, we may fall, but we get back up again. And Lord, we have purpose in our heart, even like King David did. And Lord, if we do fall, our heart is to serve God. So we come back. And we just cry out unto you and say, Lord, do not withdraw thy spirit from us, but take this back. Put your spirit within us. I thank you to God for this opportunity, to God to baptize Anthony. And Father, we will baptize him tonight in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Praise God. Heavenly Father, we thank you for a great revival this week. Father God, we thank you for your presence this night. And Father God, everybody that's been baptized this week, God, give them a very special touch this week, God. Draw them closer to you in the name of Jesus. And thank you for the powerful words from the evangelist this week. Yes. Father God, we will forever give you praise and honor and glory. Let us come back Sunday morning worshiping your holy name. In the name of Jesus, amen. amen.